on that one anymore. So. Okay. All right, so I guess I'm doing TLC then. I guess I'm doing TLC. All right, everybody. So we will start over here. Go ahead and toggle back to the, so the last week, iPad like, screen. Last week, we talked about it. I thought I was doing the columns. So. I just need you guys to speak a little more quiet. All right, cool. Uh, so hopefully you can hear me now. And yeah, we're going to go back to this uh, shared iPad screen. I'm just going to remind you of what's happening today. We are going to do some cool stuff. Mainly, we're going to be separating the three main components of extraction. And by we, I, of course, mean Victor and Avery. Uh, I will be doing the bulk of the, the directing here. And so I thank you so much for your patience. And I see we have a lot of participants here. Uh, we love to hear from you with some, some thumbs up, some thumbs downs, things like that. Um, I'll do my best to keep an eye on the chat window as things move along, um, but it's really nice for you to use the raise hand feature if you have a question. And then throughout the lab, we're also going to have some questions to pose to you so that Avery and Victor feel like this is more of a community. Uh, so where we're going to start, uh, actually, who's going to start? Are we going to start with uh, Victor? You're going to do your crush and stuff? Okay. So the first part of the lab is going to be over here. Uh, so this is a part that I didn't really talk too much about in lecture because it's easier or better seen live. So go ahead and uh, toggle yourself over to Victor. So Victor, if you want to like wave your hand so they see what's going on, and then I'll switch the mic over to you. Yeah, so the first part of the experiment, um, so we have ephedrine, which is, an, which is you know, pretty common medicine, and it is composed of three components, aspirin, acetaminophen, acetaminophen uh, aspirin, acetaminophen, and caffeine, yeah. And these three are all put together in a pill alongside of some uh, insoluble things that we don't really care about. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our three components uh, out from the pill, discard the insoluble components, and then transfer them over into, put them over into a, a state which Avery can actually use to separate them out. And, oh, what the? oh yeah. So yeah, take a pill. There we go, I'll go over here. Put it in a mortar and pestle. And yeah, get a little crush in action. It's very old school. So the goal is to, uh, Make it as fine of a powder as you possibly can. Make sure everything is kind of evenly distributed. And take a little look right here. You can see it's like a, it's a nice, very fluffy powder. So crush it for like a minute or so. Then, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, crush it. And then we're going to dissolve it in ethyl acetate. So I have 20 mils of ethyl acetate right here. So this should, should uh, take the aspirin, acetaminophen, and the caffeine in solution, but not the insoluble parts. So. Give me a couple of seconds here. So what Avery's going to do here in the meantime is he's going to set it up or set up the standards for TLC while Victor is dissolving these components, acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine, and ethyl acetate. Uh, Avery's going to set up, make a couple of solutions of those three standards in ethyl acetate. Uh, spot some TLC plates, and then we're just gonna do that fun jumping back and forth. So whenever Avery's ready, he'll take it on.
Yeah, please do, please do. Yeah, so I would love to get some expressive thumbs from you, how you're all doing so far, what's going on. You're all welcome to join me in the chat window as well, because for some reason I'm not seeing the thumbs in the chat window. So how about this? How about you just like give a quick little hi? I think that would be really nice. Yeah, I know. Oh, you don't have a thumbs up function. Yeah, okay, well, we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, I'll go ahead and say hi. So many people are saying hello. I deserve awards for this. Thank you so much. I know, thank the Academy. <laughs> all right, I, I'm very good at, at, at buying you all time. Um, so while, while Avery's setting this up, remember what TLC is all about. Uh, separation of these components based on polarity but in this case we're actually not really separating the things from each other we just want an idea of where each of those components are going to show up on the plate uh, so that later after we separate them on a column we can do some uh, fun separation so how long has it been for you has it been five minutes? Okay. It's good. Okay, so we're actually going to let Avery set his stuff up because uh, that was one thing that, you know, always lots of things in the lab to set up. But I'm going to go ahead and, and send it back to Victor. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's see let's see what Victor's up to. Just one second. Victor, I always forget your Annie, Vanny Bach <laughs> instead of Victor. Yeah. Okay, so we're spotlighting Victor's video. You should be able to toggle yourself back to that. Take it away, Victor. All right, so... I have fixed everything together. Everything should be dissolved at the last day, except for the insoluble components that's that's in the pill. So now I I take my nice little mortar and pestle. Actually, what helps actually is having having a stir rod here. So I have a nice little round bottom with a funnel, and then you can actually pour onto the mortar and pestle. That way it doesn't spill. Oh, can you guys see this? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. well, you guys can see that. All right, so can everyone see? Got a little spillage there. Now it's just kind of going in and make sure you get all the stuff out and to hopefully mediate a little bit of the spillage. You can uh, wash your mortar and pestle with a little elastate just to make sure you got all of it. So this is all going to just go in. So, a bit lower. oh, sorry. Can you see your screen? Yeah, now I can. Uh, so there's cotton here in the funnel. That, that's to trap any of the insoluble stuff. That way it doesn't go through with my slimeable components and so it's a little slower than it should have been if i had a little too much cotton but on the bright side nothing we don't want is going to come through here so yeah it'd be nice to have it'd be nice to have a little uh i should have done it in a buchner and then had a filter paper there that would be a little more a little more clever First rule of Fight Club, guys. Work smart. Not harsh. But, but yeah, so once this is all, all inside of here, I'm going to give it a wash. I'm really bad at this. I'm going to give it a wash with uh, elastate just to get all the stuff out. And then I'll rub it down. Does someone have a Capri Sun? Huh? Oh, no, it's water. Never mind. I thought uh, Carolyn had Capri Sun. Is that a Capri Sun? Oh, bummer. Oh, that's my phone. <laughs> Sorry, I'll pause it. I'm very popular these days, apparently.
All right, so through collusion, I have, all of it is, is now out of the, um, out of, out of the uh, funnel. So now I'm gonna give it a little wash real quick and then we can move on to the rotovap part. And if I remember, remember what a rotovap is from 8L, it is, it's a machine that concentrates your sample down by removing any low boiling or volatile materials. Luckily, most organic molecules are not volatile or low boiling, so. So let's give this a little wash. Danielle asked a question. Uh, yeah, anything that you need, we will send to you. Mm -hmm. Sauce. Let's give it a little wash. My hood is very, very loud. I apologize. Can you lower the yeah, this is as low as it goes, actually. And it's still going off. Okay, well, that's all out. And so now, uh, do I take the iPad with me on my journey to the roadmap? Uh, how much do you want to have to do? Do you want to move the iPad first? Have you added the facility yet? No, not yet. Okay. I'm going to go over it. All right, I'm going to go grab it right now. So I'm going to put this down. <clears throat> so I'm going now to grab some silica gel and essentially it is a very polar molecule that will bind to all of the components in that mixture and the rotovap will then pull up all the other elastic leaving dry silica gel and the components that are bound to it. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. It will in a second whenever I Try and deftly put this in. Not very. Really. There we go. So this is point. This is half a. This is half a gram of silica gel. Um, depending on who you talk to, they may tell you to use more or less. Uh, but the whole point of it is just to make sure whenever all the phosphate's gone, all you're left with is just uh, silica gel and bound substrate. So looks a little cloudy. Look at the bottom here. You can see. The silica gel at the bottom there. And yeah, so. I muted you. So we go back to this main screen just so we see visually what Victor is just about to do. Uh, and that's this part is we're making this excedrin coated silica that will eventually be added to the column. Um, so whenever Victor's ready, he can move that iPad over to, if you want to like put the sample on the road of app or like put it, like rest it on the side uh, and then bring the iPad over so they can see you set up the road of app stuff. All right, uh, it's half a, I think it's half a milliliter of silica. So it's a, in a volume amount. Woo, so Victor's taking you on a tour. I'm renaming you Victor. Vanny Bach is something I can never remember to look for. So that's Victor's hand. <laughs> we'll just we'll just do our best. Great. Actually that, that looks uh, that looks all right. Okay. So all right, Victor, back to you. Oh, not yet. No, that's cool. All right, back to you, Victor. All right. Hey everyone. Uh, can you hear me, right? Awesome. All right, so this is the Rotovap. It's a rotary evaporator. If you guys remember from Kim A or B, you, you're basically, you, you are uh, lowering the pressure, and so things boil at lower temperature, what they normally boil at. But the last day, which boiled at 77 degrees C, will now boil at a much lower temperature um, because of the lower, lowered pressure. So it's a vacuum pump that pulls the pressure out, all the air out. So, I have a bath, a water bath, so like 40 C or so. I'm going to turn the rotation on the rotovap. So that's the rotary part. If it's not rotating, then whenever it boils, it won't boil evenly and it'll just shoot up. That's never fun. So inside the water bath, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And the last thing is you need the vacuum. So these labs are a little weird. The vacuum is on the other side of the, the bench. Oh, thanks, Avery. So, social distance. Yeah, so. 
if you guys can hear the hissing sound, that means there is, that means the vacuum is sucking air because this is open to air. So if you guys can hear that. So if I close this to air, then it will create a nice little, that is way too strong. I'll turn that down a little bit. It's a 40C. It's not like horrendous. It almost did, but I caught it. So what I do to test it is I can put my finger here first to see how bad it's gonna bump or not bump. So I'm gonna lift it out of the bathroom to see. Yeah. So yeah, I am breaking a lot of rules right now, guys. So uh, can I borrow a pair of glasses from you, Avery? Uh, Oh, thank you. So yeah, I use my finger as like a test. So whenever I see that it's starting to boil off the solvent and not uh, explode in my face, then I can now like seal it officially and let it do its thing. So yeah, and so it's gonna, if you can see here, it's going to boil from here, go through here, and then this is this trap is really cold, so the gas phase at the last state will then condense back into a liquid because this is really cold, and it will drip down and collect in here, leaving. Turn, 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 turn. turn what up? Turn. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and yeah, so it's gonna do its thing for about a couple of minutes, and when that's done, then I will hand it over to Avery, and he can play, have a lot of fun. I think she wants like, I think she wants like National Geographic style, you know, I, I, you want to close up, like every drop. All right, everyone, don't get dizzy as they're setting it up. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, let's give it a couple more minutes and we should be. Ready to rock. Give that a couple minutes. I'll give it back to Caitlin for all of her uh, lovely knowledge. Okay. So, Avery, you ready for your uh, for your TLC debut? Uh, I'm good. All right. I'm actually wearing glasses. Good stuff. Hey, wearing glasses. Good stuff. All right. So, like we said, it's setting up some standards. So, I'm going to switch it on over to Avery. I'll let you know. myself for oh okay cool all right so um we have three standards that we're using today we're using acetaminophen um acetosilicylic acid which for those of you who don't know what that is that is aspirin and then the third one that we're using is caffeine um all i've done so far is i just grabbed, grabbed a few test tubes um made sure to label them i put ace wait where's the camera on this yeah, somewhere, yeah. See that? Put ACE on that for acetaminophen, um, ASP for aspirin, CAF for caffeine. Um, don't want to get them mixed up, you can help it. Um, and all I'm going to do is, um, I've already taken a microspatula of each of them, put them into their separate containers. Um, now all I'm going to do is take about a milliliter of uh, acetone to dissolve it. Um, and then from there, we can actually start spotting our standards. Um, and I will show you how to do that as soon as I get these dissolved. Some stuff out of the way here. Do -do -do. So Victor was kind enough to already get me a nice amount of acetone. I'm just going to best I can for this. And it doesn't need to be exactly a milliliter, it just needs to be around a milliliter, just enough so that we're dissolving our small amount that we have in here.
you just kind of swirl it around until you notice that everything has been dissolved. And just repeat that for all three other standards. Okay, let me know if you need, need me to adjust my camera or anything like that. Um, I can, but my head's like, when I stand up straight, my head's like. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Red of see takes about like, if you have temperature and the pressure right, about like five minutes, it's a blast day. A little longer if it's something a little more difficult like toluene. But here you go. So you have a nice little white crystals. That's. Oh. I'll let you know specifically if you're going to spot it. Caitlin, I can pause for a few seconds if you need. I think there's a mono. All right. Can you guys hear me? Awesome. That hood is so loud. I how to fix it. But um, so we now have nice little pretty white crystals. That's the silica gel bound to our, our three compounds. Maybe a little soluble impurity that I kind of let through at the end there. Um, and so I turned up the, the, the vacuum, make sure it gets really, really dry, make it easier for Avery to get out. Um, silica gel can be a pain sometimes to, uh, to get out of a flask if it's not really dry. And so I'm gonna take it out now. And I'll put you guys right here for the time being. You can see my, uh, you see my belly. All right. Hey, Paul Colosi, I see your photo. I like your photo. All right. So, can you fix my hood for me? Okay. All right. So, first thing. Sorry. First thing you're going to do is you're going to open the vacuum, turn off the vacuum, and then you hear no more hissing. That means there's no air being sucked. Then you turn off the rotation. And then take it up and finally take it off. And it smells really, really bad, uh, but you guys can't smell that. So congratulations. And yeah, so here we go. So Avery can take this. I'm gonna help him out a little bit. I'll be, I'll be a little nice. Uh, so some of it's stuck alongside the side of the round bottom flask. I'm gonna scrape it a little bit to get it off the sides. Make it easier for him to work with. Be the best lab mate possible today. This is not the norm, it's just for today. Oh. And if someone has a column plant and ready to go. Yeah, go ahead and grab that. Victor, do you want to tell us a story? A story. Oh. Um, hmm. I can tell you a fast fact. Uh, I am one of 10 siblings. Yeah, I have nine older siblings. What are your, what are your brothers and sisters? Oh, there's so many. Do I have to go through every one? Yes. In order? No. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, okay, we got Jackie, Jackie, Avelyn, um, Kevin, Glenn, Tina, Iffy, um, Chi Chi. Um, Kim and Namde. Uh, so luckily, so we're Nigerians, but really we're Nigerian names, but yeah. And another fast fact is every person in my family, male or female, in the past three generations before, has the middle name James. Right. Yeah, that's another fast fact for you guys. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, Kevin, Kevin isn't the best name in the world. 
Like, neither, honestly, neither, neither is Victor, but like, I was supposed to be a girl, but I came out a boy, so it was Victoria at first. Oh, so I took off the IA. Yeah. So I am done scraping. No more of Victor story time. That's, that's it for me. <laughs> Too embarrassed now. All right. Oh, last fast fact for you guys. So, you guys ever seen Tiger King? That's from, that's from where I'm from. So, enjoy. In where? Oklahoma. You're in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of my friends, his uncle dated that guy. Not ironically, yeah. Or not ironically. All right, so we're going to take it away from Victor because I think Victor's had, had enough mic time. Um, <laughs> we're, we're going to go back, I'm going to go to our, uh, the screen share type of thing um, to just let you know what, what uh, Avery's going to be up to. You're going to do that in the hood, right? Yeah, cool. All right, so Avery is setting up this column. He's going to show you the actual column here in a second, but it's just a, just a plastic a piece of plastic and he's going to make it magic by adding silica on the bottom first then he's going to add that excedrin coated silica or rather just like the mixture of excedrin and silica that uh, victor was making he's going to put some sand right on top of there so right now he's just uh, getting some clamp action happening um setting up in the hood so i'm going to switch it on over to him and uh the two of them are sort of working stuff out. So if there's any questions, now would actually be a great time. If there's any questions on anything we've done so far, it is all good in the hood, Augie. Uh, is there going to be a break? There, there's gonna be built-in break sort of when we're running the column. I think we'll have like a good opportunity to give you an actual break. Uh, so yeah, good question. We're, where are we doing time-wise? Yeah, so we're about a half hour in. Yeah, we'll be good. Okay, so let's take it over to Avery, it's on you now. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm actually just gonna do it, like just right in the hood. But yeah, if you wanna do that. All right, looks like I'm unmuted, I'm hoping. Cool. So, which were you going with, Victor's or mine? Which were you going with? It's on my, okay. So this is the column that we're using today. It's just a simple plastic column with a small nozzle on the bottom. Um, it's actually a cap that we need to make sure that we remove. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see this. Um, is it just crashed? Oh, screen's just changing. Um, yep. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there is a white pad that's on the bottom of our column. Whenever we are setting up columns, uh, especially silica columns, we want to make sure that that nice little pad's in there, because if that's not in there, what happens is the silica is going to just going to run straight through so that the pad is actually filtering out any salad that we have. Um, so it's very important that we make sure that that's actually in there before we start running, um, because otherwise, we're going to have problems. So this is our nice big thing of silica. Um, especially important with silica not to breathe it in. Uh, not Super great for your lungs. So what I'm gonna do, Victor, do you remember how much uh, silica we actually need in the column? Oh, I do, don't I? Should probably just look. Yep. Yeah. So it's also why I'm doing it in the hood rather than out in the open. Yeah, just doing some. Okay, so it says add approximately three grams. Caitlin, I don't know how you how precise you want us to be with this, but it says add three grams. Okay. All right. So it's gonna get, gonna do. I just didn't know if that's the way you wanted us to proceed. <laughs> so the procedure says to put about three grams in. Um, today we're just gonna kind of eyeball it. 
not, not the most scientific method I know, but it'll work for what we have to do. What I'm gonna do is take silica and just slowly add it in, scoop by scoop. And if you guys have never worked with um, straight up silica before, it is a super, super fine powder. So another part of the reason why I'm doing this in the hood is because if I did this outside the hood, it would get absolutely everywhere. Um, in the hood, we actually have these nice pads, which make it, make it a little bit easier for us to clean up at the end of the day. Yep, halfway and I'm gonna pack it down. Yep, so it's about halfway. And the way that I pack is I just kind of take it and tap it. And just kind of let it settle. We don't want to pack it, pack it super tight because if we do that, it's going to cause everything to run extremely slowly through the column, which will give us a better result, more pure, but it will take a lot more time. So, call that probably good. And now I'm going to grab two I already have it out in the hood. So now now we should be ready to actually load the column. But for that, what I'm gonna do how well you can see this. This? Yep, yep. Let me adjust where I have stuff in the hood first. I'll be happy to do that. So need to go back or forward. Yep, that's about as good as I can do because otherwise I'm too close to the edge of the hood. Nope, six inches inside, right? Oh, so it's gonna be like that, huh? So sometimes these clamps can be a little finicky to get them to actually sit right. First thing I kind of do is kind of pinch them together, hold my thumb on the screw so it doesn't try to pop out. And then you can actually spin the wing nut shut pretty easily. And then that just sits there just like that. And now we should be able to freely add and remove that. I can adjust that later if I need to. But the next thing that we should be doing is actually loading the column. And I'm gonna grab the sand just so I have that ready for the next part. So how's this look to everybody? Is it good, bad? Actually, I can't see the chat. Oh, okay. Sure. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our sample here. And this is the half gram of silica plus our crushed Excedrin and filtered Excedrin that Victor set up earlier. That's fine as in enough or? Yeah, I think that's probably good at this point. So just try to get most of it in there. Don't have to get all of it. 
I'm just gonna take a quick look, quick peek. Um, it's gonna be a little bit hard for you guys to see. I'll try to do my best. We wanna make sure it's kind of level in there. Right now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's kind of slanted. So I'm just gonna kind of tap it a little bit. Not too hard. And just try to level it out. And that is not perfect, but a lot better than it was before. And the next part for this is to actually just add a little bit of sand. And the purpose of the sand in this instance, it's not to filter it, it's not to, it's not really doing anything in the reaction. The only reason why we're putting a little bit of sand in is so that when we add our liquids in later, so our ethyl acetate, our um, hexanes, ethyl acetate, and then acetone is the third one we're using, correct? Um, the reason why we're putting the sand on top is so that when we add those in, we don't end up picking up that top layer and then suddenly separating out all of our compounds up into the liquid. So the sand is just kind of there to help mitigate that. We're also gonna pour a little bit slowly when we do actually get to the point where we're using the column. To try to mitigate that as well. And you don't need much, you just need enough to kind of get a top layer in here. I'll show you guys what that's going to look like and do my best to keep my head out of the hood. So let's take a look at that. So I would say that, that is probably good. You can kind of see the dark sand layer that's on the top there. We just want to make sure that that is fairly consistent all the way around. And then we're not seeing any white poking through. So I'm going to take a quick look on the top here. Um, and that looks like I just need a small amount more. And that should be fine now. So, yeah. So, Victor, do we already have the solvents that we need? All right, one, what I'm gonna recommend we do is we switch the TLC stuff over to your hood. So that way I can just manage this and then we can switch over to that when we need to. Yep, and those are the, yep. What else do you need? Cool. Remove these two from the hood at this point. So if, if everyone can still hear me, uh, one thing you need to know about TLC plates is they're extremely polar, so you really don't want to be handling them with your bare hands. Um, <laughs> so how do you recommend you wear gloves when you do that? That way, uh, Hopefully you're not going to expose yourself to anything unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, big oof, yeah. So we are at this stage, the experiment. We have loaded our column and we are getting ready to add carefully our first portion of hexanes and ethyl acetate. This is a one-to-one uh, -one mixture of hexanes and ethyl acetate, and it's the least polar solvent mixture of all of the solvents that we will use today. We're gonna go to a more polar one-to-two mixture and eventually to acetone. So all of this prep stuff that we've been doing, clearly this is what takes some time, right? We wanna make sure that our column is set up really nice, that um, our components that we add on there are as pure as we can get them, like away from those inactive ingredients. Uh, so then uh, now I think we're ready to start adding some solvent, yeah? Uh, yeah, I just need to get the rest of the house up. Okay, what are, we, what are we waiting, or what do we need to do? What can Victor help us? I just, I just gotta get custody on the one. 
Okay, great. Do we have uh, our six labeled test tubes? Oh, hey, Victor, do you want to help him get some six labeled test tubes? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, totally. I just figured that's a good thing to have going. Great. All right. We'll toggle back to this video and see what these guys are up to and their crazy shenanigans. Remember, as we add this first portion of hexanes and ethyl acetate, we're gonna make that aspirin travel from right along here. And as they drip out that solvent, the aspirin should drip down the column and into the test tube. So you don't actually see the aspirin moving, it's not blue, but that's the action that we're gonna imagine happening as we add our first portion of uh, one to one hexanes of elasticity. Yep, I already have one. So it's just two through six. Not sure that's how I want to do that. Um, just slightly differently. So someone was asking about like why are there different solvent mixtures? Um, yeah, we have something here. All he says to match the polarity of different components. I think that's a great way of putting it. If we start with uh, the least polar solvent mixture, only the least polar component, in this case aspirin, is going to move. As we move on to a more polar solvent mixture, mixture the second most polar will come out. So um, you, you, you're not going to have it set up where you have all three leave at the same time. You want just one of them, um, one of the components, in this case aspirin. So I like that. We're matching the polarity of the different components um, by adding, like I said, the, the least polar solvent mixture first, which will elute the aspirin. So Avery's getting this set up. So his column is directly above the test tube. And he is getting that first solvent mixture ready. Uh, as he mentioned, he's gonna add that first portion of solvent really slowly so as not to disturb the stationary phase. So we want it to be nice and flat so that the components don't fly around. <laughs> we, want them, we want those components to stay on the column. That one thing? Yeah, right, it's clean. Yeah, I just, uh, oops, yeah, it's gone. All right, Caitlin, am I muted or do I need to do that on my end? Okay, that works. Um, we should be doing the one to one. Here it is. So, Victor was kind enough to set this up uh, earlier before um, we all got started. This is our, that's the camera, one to one hexstains ethyl acetate mixture. Um, I'm gonna take 30 mils of this, put it into our grad cylinder here. Yeah, I think it is already. So maybe I'll need to do that in the future. Okay. I wasn't sure though. <laughs> yep. Or just leave it in the grad still as is and then. Very true. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it might be long enough. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like the 30, 30 mils. Um, I'm assuming that the other ones already are as well. A little bit quick there. 
So, how's the column look? Forward a little bit. Ah, yeah. They're all 30 miles? Okay. All right, let me um, leave it. Is it sliding? I hope it's not sliding. I, I might just have to push it up every once in a while. That's fine. So I'm going to do it at this point. Is the first amount that we add here. We're going to pipe head in slowly. The way I kind of do this is I put this pipe head in an angle, kind of find where the side of the column is, and then slowly squeeze along the sides, let it kind of ride down into the silica itself. And I don't know if you, how well everybody can see this right now, but you can actually see our one-to-one -one mixture already moving through the column. Uh, from where I am, I might have to adjust this later, there is a very obvious color change, which is not really changing color, it's just because we actually put solvent in there. So it's just kind of wet. Yeah, go ahead and grab it. Yeah. yeah, it's not the greatest because it's mechanical, so it's a little, but if you, just, if you have like a normal graphite pencil, those are the best to use the TLC. All right. That's no, all good. So, yeah, I can kind of see it down here, but I'm also, you know, a foot away from it and not looking through a camera. So, um, yeah, it just might not be possible to kind of show you what's going on, unfortunately, with this. Yep. Just kind of keep doing this until we see a, I like to usually see about a centimeter of liquid on the top of the stand. And that's at the point where I'll actually take this in pour. So at that point, I'm not too worried about kicking up the sand in our top layer of silica. But we just kind of keep adding and adding and adding. So as I'm doing this, I might as well um, sort of explaining kind of what the game plan from here is. So all of this solvent is going to slowly work through and it's going to pull our most least polar compound, which should be our aspirin if I'm remembering correctly. And each of these test tubes can hold about 15 milliliters of solvent. So theoretically, the way that this should be working since we are using 30 mils, 30 mils, mils, and 30 mils, in our first two fractions, it should hopefully be just the one-to-one -one mixture, hexanes, um, ethyl acetate, and one, in fractions one and two. Um, so this does require, once you get the 15 mils of your solvent, to switch to the next fraction. And then theoretically, um, fractions three and four should have our acetaminophen in it as we will be switching to our mid-polarity solvent mixture, which is the one to two hexanes ethyl acetate. All 
right. That's all. So I think this is a good time for us to take a little break. It's about an hour and 10 minutes in. We're gonna let Avery run this column, um, add in the different solvents and uh, rejoin when we're getting ready to, to get some TLC fractions. So this is me pausing the recording. We're still gonna be here in the meeting so we can still chat. Um, but I would say join us back again in what do you say, like 10 minutes? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll come back in 10 minutes. So I have 12.10, we'll see you back again at uh, 12.20. Cool, so yeah, Avery just wanted me to let you know that it's dripping at a pretty good rate and we'll make sure that we get a nice close up on that of how it's dripping out the bottom. Okay, so at this point, um, we've got about half of our first amount of solvent into our first fraction. So at this point, all we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna try to do this as quickly as I possibly can, lift up, move to the next fraction, and we're gonna start collecting into that one. Um, again, our first two fractions theoretically should have um, just aspirin in it. We would hope that three and four would have um, our acetaminophen, and then the last two would have the caffeine in it. Um, in a couple seconds here, I'm actually going to start adding the next amount of solvent, um, which is our one to two hexane mix. I'm gonna grab a different test tube for this, or uh, my pet rather. Actually for this one, Yeah, I'm gonna to need to do this. And we're just gonna repeat kind of the same process, what we did before, as soon as I get the parathelm off of this. So as Avery said, we're moving to our different solvent. We have, uh, we're in the process and the collection fracting fraction two, where we're getting that last bit of one to one uh, hexanes at the acetate along with aspirin. And he's getting ready to add in that second one, where uh, when eventually we'll switch over to fraction three, where the acetaminophen will start to move. But for right now, again, we're still working on uh, that last bit of the one to one mixture that's going through. And you can hear Victor adding ice into our uh, rotovat, or bucket for rotovat. And we're just repeating the same process as we were before, where we're just going to pipette in the first couple of mounts, make sure there's a good amount, flip it over the top, and then we can actually, at that point, take the beaker and just very carefully pour, not all the way up to the top, just to where we're comfortable. So for me, that's right about there. And as we go along and this continues to drain, we'll continue to add solvent. Oh, Victor, do you need? Oh, I got it. That's probably gonna work. All right, do you want me to hold the um, iPad for you? Or do you think you got it? Okay. Yeah, we just switched to the one to two. So we went, we went from the um, one to one hexanes ethyl acetate to the one to two hexanes ethyl acetate. And we just wait. Yeah, I'm just hold. All right, hey everyone, <laughs> can you hear me? So, in order to know what we're looking for, um, we have, I'll show you right here, we have three Three, three sets of, of the standards. So we have the acetaminophen, we have the aspirin, and we have the caffeine right here. So we dissolve them in the glass state. And so I took each one of those and I ran a, ran a TLC 
um, just so that whenever Avery is done with the column, you know what we're looking for. So this is what's up? Yep. I was just saying farther back. So uh, this is the uh, flake. So if I turn on the UV, the UV clamp, let's see if I can take this. Show you guys. It's weird that the, the camera is like on the top. Can you see that? Or can you see my hand? Ah. Yeah. So this is what looks like under the UV lamp. So. As you can see, the cat. So the caffeine's on the far right. The middle is the acetaminophen, and the left is aspirin. And so at the top, we have we have the aspirin in the middle. That's a you know, medium polarity sense. We have acetaminophen, and then the most polar thing uh, is the caffeine at the very bottom right. So with that all there, we know what to look for whenever we end up spotting each of the fractions that Avery is going to give us soon. And that's just kind of our our baseline. So um, you can't have yeah. one the entire time. Um, I always I circle the spots. So uh, it's easier. So I always label the bottom where right, each lane is, and then I circle them um, based on their UV their UV profile. So it's easier for me to go back and look at them later on if I need to come back. So that's the first standards. And to calculate uh, their RFs. What you would do is, oh, Caitlin already has that. That's really cool. So you would measure, you measure from the baseline, which is I always mark the baseline with a giant line, the baseline to to your spot. So let's do. Uh, it's really hard actually to do it this way. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, baseline to your spot. And then the baseline to your over the baseline to your uh, to where your solvent ended, and I always mark that. Mine's right here. You can see that. So, so yeah, it's baseline to spot and baseline to solvent front, uh, and that will give you an RF value. And since both are in centimeters, it is dimensionless. So it's just the ratio. And, Yeah, so I just put it back to Avery's video so we can get a look at what's happening in the column. But as you know, it takes some time. So we're going to take another, what do you say, like 10 minute break? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, one second here. Um, now you're unmuted. So uh, someone had asked earlier how you can kind of tell whether or not we have 15 mils in there. Um, best way to do that really is to literally take about 15 mils of DI water and uh, put that into just another test tube the same size. Um, so we may have switched it out just slightly early. Um, that's completely okay. We can let the run, next one run a little bit longer. That's completely fine. Um, but this is normally what I do when I'm running stuff, uh, just to kind of give you an actual visual um, point of where you should stop it. You can actually even take a Sharpie if you want and mark where that is um, and pour the water out and then you don't have to keep the test tube with the water in it still and you still have that mark. Um, so yeah, that's all I kind of wanted to add it there. Really? Okay. Because okay. there's there's no way that. So Avery is just switching yes, over exactly. here to fraction three as we collect so, more of the one to two, and he's going to continue uh, adding uh, more of that salt. Yeah, these out of one of the doors down there. Yeah. Okay. Why does that happen? Just like seven meters. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But we're gonna get that going. We're gonna take another break here. I'm just gonna read this question. So to clarify, he changed to one, one, one. <laughs> So he was actually, so Avery was actually collecting the elutant from the one-to-one -one solvent in fractions one and two. He was, there is maybe a little bit of overlap in fraction two, like maybe some of the one-to-two came out in fraction two, but the one thing that maybe isn't so clear to see is that the, the column itself has, a, has a, a volume of solvent it can keep. So even though we're adding the one-to-two on the top, there is still the one-to-one -one solvent on the bottom, and so that's what's actually dripping out. So that's the part that might be a little misleading or confusing. Yeah, so now we're at the one-to-two. It takes a while for the, all of the one-to-two, the next solvent gradient, it takes a while for that to uh, really bleed through. Okay, so we're at this point, we... Sure. Yeah, if one of you wants to hold the thing and I'll go back to Victor, let me keep going. All right, so Victor's over here. Victor's gonna tell you all about uh, some TLC of those fractions. You need it still? I need it. So at my standards, I, I went ahead and annotated them, so with their RF values, that way it's easier for later on. So there's that. And now I am going to take the first two fractions, TLC them, so I labeled them F1 and F2. You can see that there, right? <clears throat> so can you grab the, oh, are you watching that stuff? All right. Let's see over here. So I have a capillary tube that's uh, as acetone for cleaning. So I take some of that, I clean up my capillary tube. So put some inside and then you just dab it onto a Kim wipe just to make sure it's clean on the inside. There's no residual uh, chemicals in there. So then I take some from fraction one, just a little bit, don't need that much. And then, can you see that? Awesome. And then I just dab. Maybe one more dab might do it, maybe fine. Let it dry a little bit. Come on. There we go. That's not being nice. One more dab. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have it one more time. There we go. And clean it. Twice with acetone. Now we can do fraction two now. There we go. Let's just a little bit. There we go. It's fraction two. So, clean it again with acetone once or twice. And one good way of like seeing if you're if, if you have spotted it enough to see it is you can before you run it you can just uh, turn the UV lamp on. So you see that? Can you see that? Can you see it a little bit? You can see the two spots at the baseline. So because I see that, I know that I have enough spotted to where when it moves, I'll be able to see it. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, I, so I look at it before I run it, just make sure something's there, let me see my time. And so then you then take it and you have your, you have, you have your, your chamber here. And then I always put mine in the front slowly. Oh, it's not great. That wasn't a great dry try actually, but it might be okay. So it should be more uniform. So there's a little, there's a little curve there because uh, some of the some of the solution kind of got on the sides, smashed up a little bit. But it should equilibrate at the higher up it goes. So if not, if not, then I'll rerun it. But it should be okay. 
So yeah, and that's the, uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna compare that with the SANS that I ran earlier um, to make sure that uh, we have what we think we have. I mean, luckily, we started out with a relatively pure mixture of three things. So we may maybe hopefully didn't contaminate it further. But if we didn't, then we should know what's coming out. So if we see two spots, you know, one near the top, one in the middle, we, should, we, can, we can assume that's probably afferent acetaminophen. And we confirm that, confirm that via, via TLC of the standards as well. Um, but yeah, so yeah, look at it now actually. I can show them in this now. So the thing on the side that was like kind of raised, it's equilibrated now, because I mean, it's via capillary action, and things will generally equilibrate as you go higher on the plate, um, the solvent level will at least. So now it's a little more even. So my uh, screw up has now been fixed uh, through, uh, yeah, through science. <laughs> so that's all I had for now. Uh, it's Rana Buck signing off. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Um, Yep. Yep. But yeah, so I spotted in the bottom. Hopefully, you guys can see those. And now I know that something's there, so I'm going to take them and run them in this chamber. Similar to the last ones. Hopefully, I'm a little more accurate this time. And about the same. Once again, it should equilibrate once it gets about one fourth of the way up. And then, yep, a light. And then we will uh, we'll image that in about like five minutes. And when that happens, we'll take off the the aspirin, the aspirin um, round bottom flask. It should be about dry at this point. And then we'll we can weigh that and get a get a weight of how much uh, we have. And we can actually do a percentage calculation as well with you guys sample one. So, thanks. No, no, I'll, I'll talk us through it. So, so at this point, we're just waiting for that fraction six to come out. Um, Victor already ran fractions three and four, and what did they show? Oh no, and they can't hear you. So it looks like these are actually both aspirin. So wah, 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 but that's all right. Uh, in your reports, you can talk about what was expected. Um, it's actually not acetaminophen. Boom. Um, they're actually both aspirin. So uh, it looks like, are we going to combine, you want to combine those into the other round bottom? Okay. Okay, great. So what Victor's plan is, and what he's started to do already, is he has another TLC plate going. He just spotted, spotted fraction five. So we'll see what's going on in fraction five. Uh, meanwhile, like we said, Avery is collecting that last fraction. Uh, he's collecting fraction six, uh, which, you know, maybe they'll have some caffeine in it. Uh, we will see. Uh, and uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay, so just wanted to do a quick little check-in. He completely ran out of, oh, not run out of solvent. Some still a little bit in the column, but it stopped dripping. So we're just going to recap the column at this point. Um, we're not going to sit and wait for everything to make its way through. And at this point, um, we're actually set up to do our last TLCs and then start uh, taking down everything else that we need. So I'm actually going to transfer this over to Victor. And he'll do the last TLC. We'll see how those plates look. Yep, yep, in the solid waste. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I'm good. Can you, uh, hey, Avery's help here? Avery's a, a really good uh, assistant. So, so, this is fraction five. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Your thumbs over the camera, Avery. So, this is fraction five, and there's one spot, so I'm going to circle it. I'm going to take, turn this off now. I'm sorry, give me a second. Okay, so I circled the spot and it is, can you see that? Yep, so if I can, if I bring it up here now. So if I compare that, yeah, I'll also do that. Oops, I'm going to put it back up a little bit. Thanks, Avery. So if you compare this new front, new spot to the standards, you can see that this is acetaminophen. So 
see what happens is the middle spot in the standard plate right here. And compare that to this plate. It's around the same RF. And so, yeah, this is your acetaminophen. So, yep, so, so that was fraction five. So the, we're gonna, oh no. So can you everyone see what I'm saying? So this is, these are fractions five and six right here. And we hope to see in fraction six only caffeine, but we might end up seeing caffeine and acetaminophen, considering that five is only acetaminophen. Thank you. Okay, so we have fraction five. One little plate contains acetaminophen. That's cool. And when we run this last plate, we know or we should see the mid spot. This guy should be acetaminophen. So we're waiting to see what's going on with fraction six. Oh, I found a spot. <laughs> fraction six, what's going on? Who knows? We'll see. Stay tuned. All right, so this is the TLC of fractions five. Can you just... Yeah, okay, well, I'll just show you what I, uh, what I marked here. Uh, yeah, well, I'll just put it right here then for you guys. So, can you see that? Let's do the shift. Sorry, everybody. There we go. Fractions five and six. Cam camera's trying really hard. That's weird. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to go back to the diagram. Oh, wait. See, so that one, I already know. There we go. So. Yeah, five and six. You can see six has a mixture of two spots in it. One's caffeine, one's acetaminophen, and five only has acetaminophen. So I'm going to take five and put that into a round bottom flask and dry that down and discard fraction six. All right, so like I said, action is happening. He's going to take fraction five and put that in a round bottom flask. Fraction six is going to be waste. We're going to be reporting a zero percent yield for caffeine. Um, he's going to, like I said, wrote about this guy down as our last action piece. We're going to do some cleaning stuff. Um, we'll post some sample data for you all. And the last bit that we want to show you here in this video, uh, we're going to wait to see, because you're on the edge of your seats, we're going to wait to see that acetaminophen, and that's gonna be our last shot. We'll do some little closing things. Um, but I think now would be a good opportunity for any of you who have questions, uh, you can go ahead and put that in the chat window and maybe I'll unmute you and see if we wanna bring in a little discussion. Yeah, so caffeine after fraction five, yeah, caffeine was the only one that was left over. And we find that in fraction six, but it was not by itself. It was not alone. So I would love to see in the chat window, any feedback you wanna share? Yeah, so why do we think there was so much aspirin? So there, there's a fixed amount of aspirin. We didn't like make more of it. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, when, when we add in that less polar solvent and the aspirin gets kind of stuck on the column, it just takes a little longer to come out. I don't know, why do you guys think that there, we, we got aspirin over four fractions. Any thoughts? What's that? Oh, did we switch the fractions too early? So that was my bad, you guys. I was telling Avery to switch all early, and he's like, no, let's just keep going. Anyway, so yeah, if we, if we had let those fractions run a little bit longer, I think we might have got better separation. That was, uh, yeah, it was potentially my bad. Avery, or uh, Victor, what do you think? Um, I also think it's just a matter of uh, the volume change for yeah. So we take a little longer. Uh, but 
Yeah, so we could have we could have taken um, smaller fractions, so just collected smaller fractions. What's up? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like we could have done more test tubes, um, but we could have. Yeah, I mean, either either one. So we could have used smaller fractions, and we could have used um, possibly more solvent, possibly more. Um, one to one to really get out the aspirin before switching over to the next solvent. These are all just ideas. And by the way, attendance is counted um, when you registered for this event when you got here. And I believe it tracks um, how long you were here. So that's how the attendance is counted, even if this isn't your lab section. And also because we know if you watch the video, because you'll be able to tell us some things. Yeah, what other questions do we have? How did we feel about this? Any, like I'm, I'm just killing time here until we see the road about stuff. So what, what do we think? I, even just like a one word, like, hey, that was great, or cool, or not cool. We're working on it. This is our first time doing this, so contributions are welcome. Let's hear them. See them. All right, everyone, this is going to be our final shot, final one. We're going to take a look at what's happening in about town uh, down here. See what's going on. Tilt it down there, bud. There we go. Let's All right, so this is the acetaminophen. Taking it off the root of app. So that is all done. Turn everything off. Oops. And this is what it looks like. Let me wipe down the water for you guys. But it is a nice white solid. It's less, a little less crystalline than, than uh, the aspirin is but very nice white solid. So I'm gonna go weigh it and then I will give you guys the weights of the aspirin and the acetaminophen, the final, final masses for you guys. Thank you. All right, everyone. So they're just gonna wrap that up. I'm gonna come back to me for some closing little statements. Uh, so actually, I'm going to take it to, I'm going to take it out of the screen share on my iPad so we can take it to a little gallery view action. Where's my video? Here's my video. All right. So yes, thank you. Thank you so, so much for being here, for taking the time to value your education in the lab. Um, this was a learning experience for all of us. Uh, the big takeaway that, that, uh, Avery and I got to is that, you know, packing the column a little too tight. Um, Avery, or uh, sorry, Victor packing that cotton a little too tight. These are all really common things that you guys, you may, you might have made those mistakes in lab, but maybe, maybe not. Um, the order of addition of the solvents is important and maybe how much solvent we added, um, maybe switching over those fractions a little sooner or later could have affected uh, how pure our fractions are. So we'll be posting the good sample data for you online and that main step will be the TLC plate so you can calculate the RF values, the masses of aspirin and acetaminophen. Unfortunately, the mass of caffeine was zero because it was um, contaminated with acetaminophen. So yeah, what's up? What's up? Uh, no, you didn't, you didn't do that. They're going to calculate their own RF values on the standards. Victor is trying to help you out, but I'm saying you have to calculate your own RF values. <laughs> Victor's nicer than me. Now, I'm a very nice person, but I think that's part of it is for you all to calculate your own attention factors. Uh, so again, thank you so much. I'm going to take this back to a gallery view. Go ahead and um, unmute yourself, or rather, I'll unmute all of you. I'm going to take it to, I'm going to stop the recording.